One of two butane railroad tank cars that derailed and overturned Wednesday exploded around 3 o'clock this afternoon, about a mile from the Waverly Courthouse Square. The explosion occurred near the Highway 13 viaduct on the north side of town. A number of people were killed instantly in the blast and flash fire. Some were firemen or civil defense personnel standing by watching over the scene. They had been there in shifts since Wednesday's accident. Early reports say between 20 and 35 persons died immediately and as many as 45 more were injured. It's almost impossible at this hour to determine just how many died. That figure was changing almost by the minute. It is believed, but not confirmed, that one of the dead was the Waverly Fire Chief. How bad was it when you got here? About like it is right now. It's just everything leveled right here in this block. Did you see any bodies lying out in the streets or anything? No, uh, they. I was I was late getting here. They was quite. A few, they said there was 300 of them that was carried to different hospitals and and uh, in cars and ambulance both. The area where the blast occurred was an old part of town. There was a lumber company, restaurant, factory there, as well as several smaller buildings that were unidentifiable to me because of the debris and confusion. Some houses were in the vicinity also, and residents were evacuated quickly. And then about 6 o'clock, authorities feared the second tank was about to explode. That caused a second evacuation, this time of the entire downtown area. yards from the town square right now the fire and explosion are over behind me about a mile and the town the entire downtown area is presently being evacuated many of the wounded were taken to nautilus hospital in waverly where an emergency command post was set up chief surgeon subhai ali described the scene all the patients that were brought in here were alive no dead uh, patients were brought in here. Uh, what kind of uh, idea do you have as to how many more will be brought in during the night? Uh, we don't expect any more burned patients to come over here. There has been uh, deaths, but they have been taken to a morgue set uh, out at another center in town. All the patients that came here were severe uh, second and third degree burns. At the moment, Dr. Ali says he thinks the worst is over, but only time will tell. In Waverly, Tennessee, I'm Tom Smith for News Watch 2. It's a safety precaution because two of the tankers carried a dangerous butane gas, 280,000 gallons of the liquid gas to be exact. Yesterday, investigators feared that a spark might ignite the butane, sending the town up in flames. Is any smoke? Cigarette, uh, any open flame, and around where it's open leak, it, it could go off like a bomb and just lay over the whole place. As late as noon today, everyone thought the danger was over. Then at three, the tanker car exploded. One question we've been trying to find the answer to is why were hazardous material officials not notified of the cargo on board until 24 hours after the train derailed? Two uh, liquefied petroleum gas cars that uh, are involved here are safe, there's not been any leakage, and we do not anticipate any problem with uh, re-railing. Trying to find the answer to this question, but those people who would have the answer apparently in Waverly. How much difference it would have made, we, we don't really know. I'm Larry Emsweller, Newswatch 2. The story last night was keeping tanker number two from exploding. Firefighters from over 10 counties were on the scene of the derailment, spraying thousands of gallons of water over the bended hull of the full tanker. Officials were trying to keep the temperature of the gas cool to avoid another incident such as the one Friday afternoon. Even as blazes were still burning, firefighters were searching gutted buildings, destroyed houses, and burned cars for more possible dead and injured. Around 500 people were displaced from their homes due to the evacuation of the town and the fire. The American Red Cross set up emergency shelters at the Humphreys County High School and the National Guard Armory. Most of the temporary refugees slept or ate. 
When many people were brought here, they didn't know where loved ones were. Daughters, sons, or in many cases, husbands. I understand that you just located your husband uh, that you thought had been missing. Yes. He's all right. Do you live down in the area of the explosion? Yes, sir. How long has it been since you had heard from him? Been about six hours, I guess. It's about six hours. I was getting my groceries and he was at home. And I couldn't get back to him. Many people at the temporary shelters were eyewitnesses to Friday's explosion. And what they saw was still vivid in their minds. At first, when I saw it, I thought just one, it was just one car, and when we were out there, the building shook, you know, it was over there in a the building, and so we run out, and I saw this little boy on the viaduct, and he just blew up, just pitiful. When dawn broke this morning, it saw hundreds of tired police officers, firefighters, and volunteers. But LNN officials still did not know what caused Friday's blow-up. However, in the early rays of morning, officials were pleased over one thing, during the night, Tanker number two had not exploded. I'm Dan White, News Watch 2. Can I have your attention, please? We're trying to evacuate the area. Any of you residents in your homes here, you're going to have to evacuate your homes. Evacuation teams slowly made their way through this town of 4,000 people, warning the residents that their lives were in danger if they remained in the area. They met with no resistance. From the air, the western side of the town looked by noon as if it was deserted. The only activity that could be seen were evacuation crews at work. People gladly left, fortunate that they were not involved in yesterday's tragedy. A railroad tanker filled with 20,000 gallons of liquid propane exploded late Friday afternoon, shooting flames 1,000 feet upward, the concussion leveling buildings 200 yards away. Big boom, fire about two miles high, looked like, smoke. I thought it'd been an earthquake or something. Told my wife and the lady in the Chamber of Commons, I said it hit the back door. Thought the building was coming down. We ran out, run up the hill, kind of, come back down. We just kept running. <laughs> Officials today made every effort to keep the tragedy from occurring again. Roadblocks kept everyone a half a mile away from the scene. Back across the road. Can you clear these people out, please? Back across the road. Back up across the road, please. On the other side of those roadblocks, firemen maintained a constant vigil at the site of the remaining tanker. Three hoses watering down the potentially dangerous cargo. Officials said this tanker suffered a dent at one end when it was derailed Wednesday night. As a result, it's pointing like a missile at the residential community. A similar explosion and thousand-foot flames would literally level this town. So extensive is the damage here that federal, state, and area help is being called upon. Senator Jim Sasser and presidential aide Jim Freed landed at Fort Campbell Army Airfield early this morning. They were briefed by Army officials on the situation and quickly boarded waiting helicopters to tour the site. Their mission is vital to the future of Waverly. Senator Sasser and his entourage view the damage from the air. Then, on the ground, they talked with people who lost their homes, their livelihood. He saw families in her local funeral homes to make preparations for Monday's burials. Sasser left Waverly two hours after arriving. He said he was confident that the federal government would declare this town a disaster area. With that help, he said, maybe the town can rebuild. Bob Donnelly in Waverly, News Watch 2.
began late Wednesday night when a 24-car train ran off the tracks. The town was evacuated as a safety precaution. On Friday, it was as if everything had just gotten back to normal. Then, at 2.59 that afternoon, one of the tankers exploded. Five persons were killed instantly. Later, that figure would climb higher. More than 50 persons were injured. Helicopters carrying doctors, nurses, and medical supplies were rushed to the area. Those injured were then transported back to Nashville and rushed to local hospitals. One burned victim described the experience. It was like dying and we've been to hell and back.